Having a strong data science portfolio is so important in landing a job, but what kind of projects come to mind when you think of building one? Is it housing prediction, generative AI, NLP? I know a lot of you would come to think of complex machine learning models right away, which is awesome. If you have that in-demand skills, you definitely want to showcase them. But unless you're looking for a research heavy role, most of your work on the job is likely to be spent on data preparation processes like data cleaning, generating synthetic data, anomaly detection, correction, and so on. And machine learning is only part of that full project cycle. Employers want to see that you're able to perform the full data analysis life cycle and are familiar with the end-to-end -end data science process. An EDA or an exploratory data analysis project shows exactly this. The concept sounds really simple, but if you're able to do this project well, it's going to really make you stand out in the sea of Titanic survival projects. In this video, we're going to talk about what an exploratory data analysis project is, the three main reasons why a well thought out and executed EDA project can get hiring manager on your side. We'll address common pitfalls when you're carrying out an EDA project and of course how you can get started today. By the way, I made the outline and script of this video using Scrinto and thank you Scrinto for sponsoring today's video. Scrinto is a web app that combines mind mapping with the power of networked note taking. By connecting new concepts to existing knowledge through diagrams and visual aids, mind mapping is a technique that enhances memory storage and promotes meaningful learning. Did you know that one study shows students who use mind mapping techniques to review for exams end up with 12% higher grades? In my job as data scientist, my team uses something similar for tasks such as brainstorming new project ideas, organizing and sharing research sources we collected for machine learning models, and we also use it as a tool to present project findings internally because everything is in one place already it would be a waste of time to create additional powerpoints and scrinto is definitely a much more affordable and economic option for individual use with all the necessary functionalities you can try this for yourself with my code maggie10 for 10 percent off scrinto's personal pro plan or click on the link in the description box below Exploratory data analysis is a crucial step in the data analysis life cycle. And the goal is to gain a comprehensive and intuitive understanding of the data set through data visualization and statistical techniques. Essentially, there are two main purposes for an EDA. One is to clean your data set to make it usable for modeling later. And two is to understand the structure, patterns, and relationships within your data set. For example, you can identify the most important variable and their influence on the outcome of interest at this stage. You can also detect anomalies, outliers, errors that exist in your data in order to generate insightful questions and hypotheses for later investigation. You want to think about questions like, do I have enough data for a machine learning model? What insights can I already extract from this data without a formal model? And what data visualization tools can I use to showcase these findings to business stakeholders? Now let's move on to the three reasons why you should include a EDA in your data science project, despite your dying itch to work on a machine learning project. Real world data is always messy and you're the one who are expected to be able to clean it up. It's highly likely in a scenario outside of your typical school environment that your data contains missing values or certain columns need to be transformed or you need to remove outliers, etc. And the EDA stage of a project is where you would be doing these steps. What do you do with missing data? Are you going to remove all the records? Probably not. And your actions should depend on what your situation is exactly. The hiring manager would want to see how you're dealing with the situations. As a data scientist, you always need to know the data types for each column. For example, the date column is usually one that requires the most processing. Is it recorded in a string format or is it in a date time format? Does day of week matter in your analysis? What about time of day or what about holidays? Will that affect your outcome? Let's say you work for a grocery chain and you're trying to project sales for avocado. Hey! Yes, you should think about the price of avocado at different time of the year and availability of alternative products as your independent variables. But in this case, time of year for purchase is also very important. You can add a column indicating day of week using a package such as date time 
or you might want to add a binary column as well for whether this date of purchase falls within three days of a major holiday using a pack such as holidays. Now, that is to say that the EDA process is probably far more intricate and frustrating than we would originally expect. And this is why so much time is spent doing data cleaning. At the startup I work for, for any technical project, I would say 60% of the time is on data cleaning, data generation. We are a small team in a small company, so I didn't have data engineers who would pull the data for me. But this is the reality of a lot of companies out there. EDA is such a big part of the analysis lifecycle. By including the EDA project on your portfolio, you are allowing the hiring manager to see that you are able to do a big chunk of your job. Communication skills is arguably the most important soft skills for data scientists. The hire manager wants to see that you're not only able to do technical work, but also communicate technical information to often non-technical stakeholders. The way you do that is through data visualization, and a large part of EDA is data visualization. This is often done using dashboarding tools such as like Tableau or Power BI, but of course you can always code this up yourself using packages out there such as Streamlit or Dash. Other than communication, you can also use data visualization to understand your data set better technically. To explore the distribution and the relationships between variable, some classic plots are histograms, box plots, and scatter plots. To identify correlations between variables, you can use correlation matrices and heat maps. To understand the central tendency and spread of your data, you can use descriptive statistics like means, medians, and standard deviations. And to understand natural grouping or segments within the data, you can use clustering techniques such as k-means. For my perfectionist procrastinators out there, EDA is one of the easiest projects you can get your hands on while thinking about what to do with the rest of your portfolio which can seem like a daunting task at times. And EDA is easy because there isn't really a wrong way to carry it out. I saw long as you're clear on your objective, which we'll talk about a bit later on. And I almost always learn something new when I'm doing an EDA project because data is messy and you just never know what kind of raw data you're gonna get. And while I'm Googling, I always come across at least one new or interesting approach that someone else shared. It is also fun because you can find data set in the area that you like and answer questions that you are curious about. This is a great way to show off your passion to hire a manager. For an EDA project to succeed for the purpose of getting a job, we need to step into the shoes of a hiring manager. Remember when I mentioned there's no round way of carrying on an EDA as long as you're clear on your objective? In a business setting, I wouldn't say you're always clear on the objective, but the business questions you're trying to ask is somewhat bounded by stakeholders. But this becomes 10 times harder when you're trying to do this on your own because when you are exploring a data set, there's literally endless questions that you could ask. And this is why you need to make sure that you have a clear scope on your project at the beginning. The second common pitfall of carrying an, out an EDA project or any portfolio project in that matters, not telling a story. When a hiring manager choose to click on your portfolio website, each project really only gets a few seconds of attention, if at all. So make sure that you have a clear header for each section and that your storytelling is compelling and well-organized. This means you want to have a short paragraph on your background stories, where you find your data, what question you're trying to answer. You want to present your findings with visualizations, not too many, usually two to four is more than enough. Make sure you have actionable insight and technical next steps at the very end. Last but not least, you need to execute your EDA project like you're solving a real business problem. For example, in this video, I conducted an EDA using a publicly available bike share dataset, but I approached the project as if I were an employee at the bike share place, and I went through how you can brainstorm realistic business questions as a product data scientist. So if you're new to the data space or are unsure how to carry out an EDA, I highly recommend checking out this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and stay tuned for more project tutorials.